Hello, um, happy International Day of the Book, happy San Jordi. Um, this February, this past February, uh, my book Dressed for a Dance in the Snow was published by other press. I'm very happy about this publication and uh, it was translated from Spanish into English by Julie Jones, uh, who did a wonderful job, as you will see. Um, ten years ago, I went to Moscow and I uh, interviewed nine women who were in the Gulag. I wanted to know about the experience of women who were in the Gulag because we knew much more of men like Solzhenitsyn and others, but not so much about women. And I wanted to fill this gap. So um, I was there interviewing women who were uh, rather elderly and um, all of them had something special, very special about their experience, something harsh, but not only that, there was a great deal of resilience and even um, good, some good memories of the Gulag. Like for example, all these women who were cultured, rem they remembered uh, stories other women told them and poetry and and so so many things they even sometimes got a possibility to read a book there um, they formed a very strong friendships over there and those friendships were very very different than our friendships in normal life so this is what uh, these women told me um, and I would like to um, I would like to read a couple of pages. Um, this is the ending of one of the chapters. Um, one of the uh, women who really struck me most it's Elena Koribut Dashkevich, who um, told me her incredible story, um, and um, who became a very important scientist after being let out of the Gulag. So, uh, this is the end of her story. Everything I achieved later in life, I owe to the few books that I managed to read in the Gulag, she concludes and then exclaims. No one can imagine what a book meant to the prisoners. It was salvation, beauty, liberty and civilization in the midst of total barbarity. Oddly enough, my life developed exactly along the lines that the ancient shaman had predicted. After Stalin's death in 1953, and thanks to my mother's heroic efforts, the new authorities reduced my sentence to a kind of provisional freedom. I felt terribly let down because even though I left the Gulag, I was forced to live in the same area. The worst part is that I wasn't allowed to register in the university, which, um, uh, which is what mattered most to me. I had no work and no money. At last, thanks to the intervention of friends, I found work in a chemical laboratory in the city. It was there in Volkuta that I married another ex-prisoner. My husband, a man of great humanity with a highly developed sense of ethics, worked as the director of the theater in Vorkuta. In 1954, I was given permission to enroll in correspondence, with, uh, correspondence courses at the Polytechnic uh, University in Vorkuta. In 1960, when I moved to Moscow, with my husband and my three-year-old daughter, Ina, I had a diploma that made it possible for me to study in the Institute of Automatization and Cybernetics. I was 37 years old. When I got to the capital, I was confronted with an easygoing lifestyle that was very different from what I had known in Vorkuta which had become a refuge for prisoners or ex-prisoners of the Gulag. I had to adapt 
to this new mentality, but I never got used to its superficiality. People complained about insignificant things and led shallow lives without really giving any thought to what mattered. I think the Gulag helped me find a sense of values, to distinguish between what was meaningful and what was trivial. I focused on my studies and later on my work, taking advantage of every minute, almost every second, to do something worthwhile. If I was traveling by metro, for example, I always carried a book of art or philosophy, or especially the classics, whether they were Russian or universal, and I took advantage of the time to read and to learn. I didn't go to cafes or restaurants with, with my friends. I preferred to dedicate all my time to my work. I became a specialist in cybernetics and computer technology. I published a number of books in that area and participated in many international conferences in the Western capitals as one of the few women in that field. I didn't retire until I was 80, but I keep writing scientific articles as well as texts about my experiences in the Gulag. I want to die as a person whose merits have been recognized and surrounded by my family. Thank you very much.